Welcome to a clean tech news wrap up from Ecotricity and we start with new EV models coming to our shores. First up is the arrival of the new Tesla Model Y, which is technically a refresh as it's mostly the same car underneath with some modernizations. I've never been a huge fan of the Model Y styling wise because I've found the looks to be a little bit boring and blobby. And after what Elon did to the Cybertruck's polarizing design, I was, I didn't have high hopes. When I had the chance to finally see it for the first time in Sydney at Everything Electric a few months ago, I was genuinely impressed. It's a much more stylish, well prepared portion car. I think it's a huge improvement. The only thing I don't know is whether or not this handsome refresh will be enough to rescue Tesla's slumping sales. Now the official launch was on the 9th of June and it was an interesting event. First time I've ever seen a media event at Tesla. Now I've just got to wait to see the registration figures to find out if this new Tesla Model Y will be a sales winner. As for other car models coming to New Zealand, well this is where I get to tell you about the BYD Seagull and the BYD Atto 2. I had the chance to drive both of these cars in China last month and now that the embargo is finally over I can tell you my driving impressions. First of all I've got to tell you that of all the vehicles we drove, it's nine vehicles we drove over two days, the absolute crowd pleasing winner for all the journos there was a small car named the BYD Seagull. It is a pint sized electric car built to a budget but it doesn't look or feel cheap. In China believe it or not you can get this in two flavors with ranges of 260ks or 300 144Ks WLTP and you can buy them for as little as 10,000 New Zealand dollars right now. Okay, now what it would cost if it ever made it down to New Zealand remains to be seen. We have to add a lot of safety features that Kiwis and Aussies expect to see in a car. So do check out the YouTube channel if you want to see those vehicles, how the Dolphin handles and what gadgetry you get for your money. There's also a BYD Atto 2, which is kind of like a bigger BYD Dolphin. It's a practical electric car with a very comfortable ride. Better suited to the school runs than hooning around a slalom course, but hey, if the price is right, it could be the next Toyota Corolla. And that's the thing, BYD aren't yet convinced that they should bring either of these two cars down under. So if you want it, go check out those videos and tell them in the comments. I'm serious. BYD do watch my car reviews and your voice will be acknowledged. So if you want it, go check out those videos, make your voice heard. So yeah, the Chinese are really out leaping ahead when it comes to new EV models, but the Japanese aren't resting on their laurels either. Honda's just leapt out of nowhere and undercut the entire EV market with the launch of a new Honda EN1. Now this is a mid-sized battery powered crossover with a claimed range of 500 Ks per charge, which sounds a little too good to be true when you look at the price, because it's only 52 grand. That makes it cheaper than a new Kia EV3 and the same price as a BYD Atto 3. Well, I mean, I say that, but as of well, this entire month, June, BYD have sliced five grand off the price of all their new in-stock models, so it's not a bad deal. As for the EN1 from Honda, well, Honda have been a bit slack in getting back to me. I've contacted them a couple of times asking about this good looking car. I will get my hands on it. I'll get behind the wheel. It could be the next big thing. Or not, hit subscribe, we're going to find out together. In other clean tech news, I visited e-trucks in Auckland recently and saw their fully automated battery swapping system in action. Now how it works is that you drive in your truck and while you wait in the cab, a laser guided crane goes over the top and removes the flat battery, takes it out into the little storage area out the back and then that battery starts rapid charging. Meanwhile, a fully charged battery is then loaded onto the back of the electric truck and in less time than it takes to fill a diesel truck, you're on your way again. Now, I made a full video of this system in action and I got to climb through it so do go check out the link underneath this video it's in the description so you can see the system in action it's really cool it's futuristic tech but it's it's working now with real customers and real electric trucks in the real world in Auckland in 2025. As for upcoming events, everything electric's getting closer. So grab your tickets and book your hotels early. It's coming back to Australia. This time it'll be in Melbourne on the weekend of the 14th of November. No word if they're going to put me on stage again. Let's hope not. Although I may look cool and calm and collected in front of the camera. It's just you, me and a green screen right here. In the real world, on stage with 100 people watching, if you hooked up a cardiogram, I would look like a seismogram from Christchurch. And something a little closer to home was Field Days, which was in mid-June, this time with a growing amount of battery-powered tech on display. Now this is great news because farmers can often be a little bit more traditional and reluctant to trust all this weird new clean tech stuff. So to see so much new battery powered stuff there from maintenance to heavy haulage was a real sign of positive change. Like if the farmers like it, you know it's good. We've finally got there. Batteries aren't just for power tools anymore. Let's move on to innovation coming to New Zealand. 
one day. It's called megawatt charging. And one Chinese car maker I've been going on and on about has a functional megawatt charging car, meaning this is a car that can recharge its batteries in the same amount of time it takes to refill a tank of petrol or diesel. Not only that, I got to climb through this car while it was on display at BYD's headquarters in China recently, so let's check it out. Now, this is a BYD product, and it just looks like any other regular sedan, and it is in every way, really. Except one thing sets this car apart. This one has megawatt charging. It can charge at 1,000 kilowatts. What that means is that this car can dump about 500 kilometers of range into its battery in less than five minutes. It's also only 35,000 US dollars. That's the equivalent price of what this new technology costs. Plus, BYD are gonna roll out, to start with, 4,000 individual megawatt chargers, to start with. And let's take a look inside. First thing you notice is, oh, I love that interior. Look at that, that's like sitting in a cup of coffee. How could you not love this? You start with the central display, which is very BYD. Gosh, the sound insulation here is excellent. Oh, are you serious? It's got a fridge. The dashboard design, the materials they used is fantastic. It's just different. As usual with all the BYD products, the attention to detail is staggering. The stitching's remarkable. The colors are wild. I love that. I know this is not for every Kiwi's taste. I love this. Let's see rear legroom light. Let's have a look. Not bad. I'm gonna have a little sneak. I don't know if I'm allowed to sit in it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Far out room. Absolutely amazing. Oh, you can't be serious. It's got controls and everything here as well. USB charging, we've got a screen here to control your music and air conditioning and the sunroof as well. That half opens as well, I should point out. It's not just decorative. This is an electric car that's 35,000 US dollars. It goes really well, it's well appointed, and it charges faster than you can fill up a petrol car. This is real technology that is on the market today here in China. Actually, the whole trip to China I did recently was a real eye-opening experience. Like take Shenzhen for example, it's a city of 17 and a half million people, but it's a city that's remarkably quiet when you walk down the city streets. The main reason for this is that back in 2018, city leaders said yeah nah to pollution as the air was getting so bad, so they made all the buses and all the taxis and all the motorbikes and all the scooters battery powered, like all of them. Then they made it really expensive to register a dirty vehicle and the result is that Shenzhen's air quality has improved drastically as is the health of the people. As you just heard, you can stand on the side of a busy city street in Shenzhen and all you hear is tire noise, chatter and horns. There's no smell or acrid fumes or eye watering or roaring engine noises. China's also been going hardcore on solar. They've installed 550 times New Zealand's entire solar generation capacity just last year alone. I can't stress how good all this clean tech felt to walk through it and see it in action. It just felt right. And this is all absolutely possible to do in our cities too, in New Zealand. And it saves money. Like we'd be better off as a country. We'd be healthier and wealthier. So we really need to copy China in these areas. So buckle up because if you thought I was insufferable before, after this trip to China, I'm now 1000% energized about clean tech and how we need to catch up. Now that electric makes financial sense as well as ecological sense, those against EVs and now a small and shrinking group. So let's make it happen, Kiwi. More nerdy stuff from China came in the form of models at BYD's headquarters. Check this out. Little working models of their car production facilities. It's really well thought out. Like all the little car shells move along and got little lights simulating the precision welding and everything. The whole thing's fascinating. It's a real treat for adults and kids and, and adults who never quite grew up. Seriously, the whole China trip was fascinating. And we even got to go behind the scenes of an actual BYD production center, or should I say production city? Like they've got their own restaurants and their own traffic and infrastructure and security. We got to go through it on a guided tour to see cars actually being made, like stamped from flat metal pieces to finished machines driving off the production line. It's, it's insane to watch. Now, no one was allowed to take video of this facility, but we did have a camera operator recording stuff with us. And this footage will be uploaded later along with my comments. They even got actually a blob of hot metal somehow to land on my back from sparks flying, so that was memorable. Stay tuned for that one. As for new charger locations in New Zealand, there is a fresh new rapid charger up and running in Kaikoura outside New World, and it ain't slow either. This is one of those new charger setups which can rapid charge multiple vehicles at once, and it can pump up to 300 kilowatts if you've got a fast charging car. And what that means in English is that it's enough to dump around 400 k's of range into an EV battery in around 22 minutes or so. So nice one, ChargeNet, who now have hundreds of rapid charges all around New Zealand. So if you're gonna get an electric car, sign up with ChargeNet, they are everywhere now. And lastly, to wrap up this video, I wanna tackle your feedback. And it's nice when I actually get some questions and comments instead of just insults. Although, I won't lie, some of your insults are pretty creative. 
First comment is from Glenn McEwen, who says he just got solar installed on his roof thanks to the solar video I churned out featuring my own solar install. Now, Glenn, you've got no idea how happy that makes me to hear that. Now, I don't care what solar install you use watching this, just get solar. You'll never look back. Like, it's June and my power bill is still zero. It's been zero dollars since December because I'm still using the credit I amassed during summer. That's how solar works. It's that good. So, Glenn, enjoy a system. Mate. Next up is a comment from Burnt Face Man, who says he'd like to see a comparison of different individual chargers side by side. Now, this is an interesting idea. The thing is, I've already got my own favorite charger. It's an Evnex E2 that's actually in my garage right now, but there are so many chargers on the market now that I wouldn't know where to start. Maybe a top five could work. If anyone wants, else wants to see a video like this, let me know what you'd like to see and what things you require in a charger. He says he also wants to see a video about choosing the right solar panels. And this is something I might be able to do a bit easier. Again, tell me in the comments under this video what you want to see and I'll make it happen, I hope. Nay Nay Boy writes, why did I put solar panels on my roof when it'll need replacing soon? And the short answer is, Mate, don't worry about it. Like before I put the panels on the roof, I spent every weekend for a month replacing all the old nails on the roof with new surprisingly <laughs> expensive galvanized roof screws and washers. And the roof actually, it may look faded, but it's in pretty good nick. It's not going anywhere. But I mean, if I do need to lift up the panels years in the future, it's not the end of the world. Just got to get the sparkies out, take the panels off, fix the roof, put the panels back on. Everything's fixable. The next comment is from Crassal, who was really thankful that I showed how much room there is in the back of a car by lying down on them. Mate, I totally get you there. Like, it's a great useful relative way to show the size of a boot of a car. I know it looks comical but it is actually useful. It's just a really logical test and I also like to know which cars I can go camping in. One other commenter wasn't quite so kind in the recent bargain hunting EV video in which I go to five different dealerships trying to find the best value EVs you can buy today on the second hand market. Now this particular second hand used EV it was a 40 kilowatt hour Leaf only offered about 200 k's of range per charge which isn't amazing but it's still more than useful enough for the average Kiwi who just wants to go to work or go to school or go do the grocery shopping without spending mega bucks on petro fuels and servicing and making the planet worse. The thing is, a car with a range of 200 k's is still very useful for most Kiwis. In fact, there's a reason there are still thousands of first generation Nissan Leafs with very tired batteries still being driven daily because even though they may only have a range of 80 or 100 k's per charge, they're just the ticket for many Kiwi EV drivers. Now Albert Kapua writes, I hate watching your clips because I end up buying a vehicle. Oh my. I'm so with you there, eh? Like every car I drive, almost every car I want to buy for some reason. There are some EVs I do love more than others though. Straight under that, another reviewer writes that well, Chinese cars offered good value, but they need to look more aggressive and ha. Huh? Let me introduce you to the upcoming Yangwang U8. Now, I was just in China and I got to drive this thing. Four electric motors, 880 kilowatts, more than 1200 newton meters. This video is going to blow your mind. Hit subscribe. If you're enjoying this video, let me know. Put it in the comments, hit the like and subscribe button, and put a smile on this drop Pavlova dial. Otherwise, until the next video, drive clean, drive safe, drive electric.